Hello and welcome to another edition of Busting It. Today we're going to do something different. We're going to do requests. Yes, just like a radio show, we're going to take your requests, the ones you've made on social media, on the blog, on our YouTube, and on our YouTube channel. I would like to thank everyone for all their requests. They've sent in their nice comments and um, I've really taken a lot of what you've said on board and we are going to um, do something unique today. I received a request on the forums from someone and he actually asked me what, how I would set up a 41221 where the center forward would be the main focal point of scoring. He would ably be assisted by two wingers. All that and more later on the show. But first, before I look into the tactic, let me answer a question I received on our blog, addicted2fm.com. Someone asked whether or not I would be doing a few more programs on adapting the adapting series I've done so far, which are basically playthroughs. I show how easy it is to play the game without making too many changes. My whole goal in this game is to simplify the entire process of um, setting things up. A lot of people have overcomplicated it. You know, it doesn't help when you have a thousand roles to choose from and, and you have the complexity that appears to be in the game. I don't know how many of you know, there are about 2 to 3 million lines of code in the game. They make one or two changes every year, but this does not drastically change the way the game plays. Essentially, the game still plays the same way. So if you have taken a logical, consistent approach to setting up your tactics, how you approach tactics in 1998, how you approach tactics in 2002, and how you approach tactics, tactics today, they're not going to be very much different. If you are looking at the game from a logical perspective, then it's easy. And that is the goal of Bustanet. We want to make things easy for people when they head into the game. That's where I'm going to be focusing my adapting series. We are going to use the adapting series to show people how they can set up a tactic, how they can make it simple, how they can make it logical, and how they can take that whole approach and keep using the same approach for as many seasons as they want. West Bromwich Albion in my safe have used the same tactic for the last four seasons. They haven't made any changes. I haven't like changed roles around. I haven't like changed mentality or shape or you know played three different tactics in a season. We've only used that one tactic. The only time I've made changes is when I faced an attack that was focusing down the flanks. So it's really important that you know what your tactic can do. It's really important that you understand the limitations of your own system. In the 4 3 one that West Brom used, we are very cognizant of the fact that our biggest weakness is actually on the flanks. So whenever I face a wide formation or a formation that plays with um, overlapping play and they are rather attacking, I tend to switch my complete wing backs back into a full back role which essentially removes their room from position and gives them a bit more rigidity and solidifies their uh, contribution to its defense. I plan to do more adapting series videos showing how this can be done with West Brom and Champion, Atletico Madrid and maybe a third team. If you have any questions that you want me to look at or any other areas of the game that you want me to cover, please um, drop me a note at Twitter. My handle is uh, at Bustanet. It's changed from the older handle which was at YRashidiY. You can also find me on the forums or drop me a note on addicted2fm.com, my blog. I will try my best to answer any queries and of course, you know, thank you very much for subscribing to the channel and, and this helps inspire me to do more and more videos. Time now for me to respond to a request by Southern Buddy. He wants to know if the 41221 can be set up to have a centre forward as the main goal of scoring threat, ably supported by two wingers. I am going to take a chance with my West Bromwich Albion side. They've played the same system for four seasons now and I'm going to get them to play a new system during the League Cup final. For the first time ever, they're going to use a 4-1-2-2-1. This team has not been set up to play a 4-1-2-2-1 and they do not have, they probably won't even have the players for the system. So I'm going to have a look at my squad. Um, the first thing I want to do naturally is look at the strikers. Okay, my top scorer is Marko Perkovic, but he's out injured. Let's look at who can play. He's out injured, so I'm going to also include the under 21s in this because we don't have enough players. So we are going to check. Uh, all right, so let's let's rule out Perkovic. He can't be playing. All right, 
Okay, so let's look at who can play. So I need a center forward who has the strength to play the position. So I'm looking at Nathan now. Nathan is one of our top scorers this season. Um, he doesn't have the strength to play the position. Uh, he has off the ball. He has got great teamwork and vision. However, I'm, I might not play him because he can't hold. He probably won't be able to hold off the players. The um, other choices I have... Let me look at Callum Keeling. Now, this is a boy who's actually in the under-21 side. I moved him into the senior squad for experience, but it looks like he's going to have to play as the centre forward. Uh, he's got the strength, the stamina, the pace and the acceleration to play the role he'll get away from his players. Off the ball is decent, his vision, teamwork and anticipation are all pretty solid. He's definitely got teamwork and uh, work rate going for him. He doesn't, he can't cross but that's not really important. His finishing is decent, his finishing is pretty good but his passing is not very good so I'm gonna have him as, uh, I'm gonna try him out as a centre forward and see how we go. I have Moreno who is actually my striker but he doesn't really have the strength to play in the position and he he may have he may have other decent attributes but I really want him to have strength because he's going to have to play in the rest of the players uh, okay now what about the flanks oh, okay I'm down to Matt Hadrill oh he's got pace and acceleration for the flanks if you notice I'm looking at pace and acceleration first for my AMs and then worrying about the rest because his off the ball is great so he's going to get past his players he's got great dribbling and horrible crossing and his passing is average so he's probably going to be better in a system that involves uh, cutbacks instead of crosses let's look at his partner on the other side probably be Gauchino He's got strength, acceleration, pace, they're all pretty decent. He's got good dribbling, finishing, so he's gonna come in from he's gonna come in from wide and he's got moves into channels and cuts inside. So he is actually a pretty good option for one of the AMs. Okay, that sorts out my lineup. I know roughly who's gonna be playing. Okay, now we're down to looking at the three in the middle of the park. The three in the middle of the park, they all need to be uh, fairly good at tackling so um uh, let me just shorten this because i don't need the under 21 so this okay uh, robledo and mixira are my wingers and i've got christique salas romero these are all potentially gonna play in those positions because they all i'm looking at tackling first then i'm looking at pace he's 11 for pace but i think his anticipation is pretty good so he can play in that position because he's got good anticipation so I, that kind of offsets um, lack of pace he's got good anticipation um, work rate is solid he's tackling his passing his first rate so he is definitely going to be one of the three men in the middle of the park the other person i'm going to use is lucas romero he has this in tackling and um, his anticipation more than makes up for his uh, 14 for tackling and his strength and his stamina are fantastic and who is going to be the third guy in that trio probably this one salas is actually lucas romero's long-term replacement he's got fantastic first touch stamina is solid he's gonna be he's got strength to hold people off and definitely the first touch to first touch is going to be very important in any mid for any tree in the middle of the park the reason why I like first touch is because if he gets a pass from somebody, he's going to be able to control the ball pretty quickly and then he's going to be able to find the pass because his decisions are fantastic and he's not going to really going to lose concentration. Top that off with his bravery and anticipation. This guy has the package. So if you notice, I look for similar qualities in all three of my midfielders. I need them to work hard. I need them to be able to tackle. I need them to be able to pass the ball. At least one of them has to be good enough to play as a playmaker. And I have options in Lucas Romero, Salas to be playmakers. That is going to be really important for a uh, 4-1-2-2-1 because um, if anyone saw the match between Juventus and Barcelona, you'd have noticed um, the Juventus midfield was slow. Uh, Pirlo is gone. Pirlo is really old right now. So you could tell when you're faced with a team that's dynamic, if your players in the middle of the park don't have the um, energy to keep up with a fast pacing side you're gonna lose control of midfield and then lose the match before we start working on the 4-1-2-2-1 
it's um, going to be important for me to look at space and control of space. Whenever I set up any kind of a system, the first thing I want to do is make sure that my system is balanced. Um, Tactical Zen was one of the articles I wrote back in 2012. A lot of it still applies. The whole goal of it is to ensure that you control space and that your attack is balanced enough so that you don't leave any one area of the pitch too vulnerable to attack or control by the opposition. If you look at my 41221, I'm going to be looking at having this guy attack and I'm looking at an entire area on the pitch that is going to be the focus of my game. Here in this part of the pitch, I want to make sure that Salas moves forward and takes control of this pitch and makes Yuraka actually moves forward. If you remember earlier, if you notice earlier, Hadro doesn't really cross the ball. So I'm going to be setting him up to do cutbacks. I don't really need him to attack the flanks and drop in across because that's not going to be his strength. So he's going to have to depend on Mixi Raka who's going to make those runs up. And Mixi Raka's job will be to drop those crosses. Now on the left flank, I've got Gauchino. He's going to be attacking and he's going to be going down, dropping in crosses and also cutting inside. I expect his PPM to influence him moving this side a lot during the game. Because of the amount of movement that he's going to make, I need to make sure that certain areas of the pitch are locked down. And the biggest problem for me is going to be in this side of the pitch. Which is the reason why I've elected to use Pinola as a ball winning midfielder. If I have Pinola set up as a ball winning midfielder, his zone of influence is actually pretty large. Now because I'm using a deep line playmaker, I don't really have to worry so much about control of the zone that is at the back. The 4 is primarily a defensive system. In order for you to make it into an attacking system, which is my plan, you need to create more channels, more passing opportunities for your players to exploit. Alright, um, this is how we're going to line up the 4 one 2 2 one Teams of, In terms of team instructions, I have certain team instructions which are defaulted in my head for attacking systems. One of them is close down more, stay on feet, use offside trap and prevent shot goalkeeper distribution. If you remember earlier, I said Hadro can't really cross the ball, so we're going to employ work ball into box. I want a lot of cutbacks, so if, whenever I want a lot of cutbacks, I generally go with work ball into box. And play out of defense is something that I always do. Best advice I can give people when they're starting off a new tactic is not to jump into team instructions and choose whatever feels logical. I suggest looking at your tactic first, seeing how it plays out, and then making small adjustments because larger adjustments are just going to displace your whole system and you're not going to figure out where it all went wrong. In terms of PIs, these three guys up front are going to close down much more and tackle harder. My one concern about the system is going to be this position, the AFA. Whether or not he drops deep enough for him to lend support to the rest and whether or not this guy gets up front to support, this hole here needs to be controlled. If I can control this hole, with enough movement, then we will win the game. And I'm toying with the idea of, I am toying with the idea of changing this one to a centre forward or AF, and this might happen during the course of the game. Well, 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 everyone is kind of surprised that we have changed our system. They are playing a uh, 4-4-2. Oh. If you look at the opposition, they're playing a 4-4-2. They're going to be pretty wide. Oh, okay. With your two room. Let me check. Uh, we look fine. So I'm going to start the match. Oh, I'm going to switch it to... Extend it for a bit while I change the camera angles. Okay, and I'll go back. I like to see the ball winner now supporting the attack and 
being in and around the penalty box, which is exactly how I exp how I wanted the system to play. Our defensive line is fine where it is because the defenders are obviously comfortable in clearing the balls that have been cleared from the defense. The deep line playmaker has found Hadro who's cut inside. And I'm not I'm playing uh, with the sharp work ball into box and Keely scores. There wasn't even enough time for me to explain the system. I like how it's playing out. I like the fact that my midfielders are controlling the center of the park. Keely, being an advanced forward, took advantage of a bad misplaced pass from one of their players. We obviously have um, got pretty good control on that field now. We'll take a look at the stats in half time. Callum Keely has the strength to hold off the opposition and win us a penalty as well. Now if you want him to score more goals as you know Southern buddy just make him a penalty taker as well. Uh, two up, two youngsters playing in this side. Uh, West Brom playing once again this 4 1 2 2 1 for the first time this season. I'll just make sure that we are key highlights. I don't need it to be an extended. Ooh, no, what a save! One. Double safe. Holy crap. What a performance by the keeper who I bought for four hundred thousand pounds. Those were two clear cut chances that Chelsea just blew away. Important now for me not to get carried away. Pause for a course. They've gone, um, their, their right flank has become a lot more attacking. I'll have to check my system to make sure that we aren't overexposed. Chelsea are exerting themselves a bit more in the game. Pinata has been um, walloped in the middle of the pitch. I really need Pinata to be playing. Oh, I'm calling him Pinata, even though his name is Pinola. Not bad for the first half, pretty even game. Kini has been sensational in the first half, without a doubt. That has been. <laughs> I am so happy with this performance. Let's look at the match stats. If you look at the first thing I'm going to zoom in on is pass completion rate, which is really important for me. 4 1 2 2 1 is 80%, which is good. My defenders are the first ones I look at 71%. I'm happy with that. Pretty even the possession, which is not, uh, which is quite rare for West Brom. They play a 4 3 1 2 and we generate like 50 to 60% possession. I'm pretty happy with how this is set up. Okay, I'm going to go back to extended because there might be a surprise. They might change formations. I could get screwed. 4 4 2. They're still playing the same formation. No changes to the system. Romero has picked up a card. So I will make one slight change to Romero. He's playing as a deep line playmaker. I'm going to swap him and Salas so that Salas can tackle since Romero has already picked up the card. And I may even bring on Simeon Slavchev. The 4 one, two, two, one is not a bad system to play if it's set up right. We're lucky because um, I have one centre forward with some strength.
I haven't done any work on the set pieces, so I'm really depending on <laughs> luck to some extent. Chelsea are playing pretty well. They still have Hazard in the team. <laughs> pretty old. Getting on in his years, just like me. Well, Pignola is now looking like he needs to come off. So we're going to make a change very soon. I'm going to bring Christigon for Pignola. Pignola has played really well, but he is looking like he may not last the whole game. The system is getting fairly good support from everyone. Keely has to have the strength to do... He has definitely holding up the ball really well up front, giving others time to get into the box. Hadrill, offside. Young, talented, future star of West Bromwich Albion. I'm not happy with the fact that we are actually generating less shots than uh, Chelsea at the moment. Given the fact that this is the first time we've played with the system, I'm pretty happy that we're making our chances count. In, in the box and fluffs another chance. He was under a lot of pressure in the box, so it's good to see that we have a ch Oh, okay. I'm happy to see how we're playing thus far. With time, we will be able to generate more um, shots on goal and, um, and possession, for sure. Defending set pieces hasn't been West Brom, which I'll be in strong suit this whole season. I've never really bothered with uh, that aspect this season. We're a team that just wants to score more goals than the rest. I always recommend when you're trying out a new system to play it on the 2D screen. If you're really unsure and you want to minimize familiarity, go to FMC and pick up a really good side and set up your system and try it with them if it works with them then it's only a question of fitting in the right place to work, make it work with your save on football manager I like the way the system is playing out on the, on the flanks with the full backs coming up to support when we clearly have the, the advantage in their half the work ball into box shout encourages my team to do cutbacks. Of course, if you have the guys who can launch in crosses, take off that shout. Susa in goal is having a blinder. I mean, he saved probably two really good shots at goal. We probably would have been, uh, they would have probably equalized by now had it not been for him. The defenders are all doing their bit in the game, as Chelsea obviously have now switched their attention to the other flank and I haven't done anything to compensate. They're now coming down our right flank where we have an attacking Mixi Raka. I should actually check him back, but I haven't done anything like I normally do with a 4 3 one too. Pretty confident in our side's ability to hold our hold hold our advantage. Single biggest mistake you can make with any new tactic is not spending enough time analyzing the players that you have before embarking on creating a new system. So 
Salah's doing really well in his deep line playmaker role. And West Bromwich have won the Capital One Cup. It wasn't a very comfortable win. Uh, I'm used to better performances from West Brom. But today, we were using a 4-1-2-2-1 for the first time. Towards the back end of the game, we definitely came under pressure. Our defenders were having a harder time moving the ball about. By playing less risky passes, I ensured that at least they didn't launch the balls needlessly. Uh, we had one player I had to take off. The ball went in the midfield the moment he was taken off. We had problems the moment Pinola was taken off. He was having a blind of a game, you know, winning the ball in the middle of the park. I brought on Lorenzo Christie, who is actually um, the first choice player for many for the whole season, but he is now getting on in age. It's like me wanting to put Pirlo in, uh, running all over the pitch, and don't think that would have been an option for us. When Pinola went, came off, uh, from the 65th minute, I noticed uh, that we were having problems. So here, it's really critical that if you were to set up the system the, the way I've set it up, you know, you have to make sure that these two, these three players are going to be key for your 4 one 2 to one These guys will have to control the middle of your park. If they don't control the center of the pitch, you're not going to able to, you won't be able to get these three into the game, and there will be risks that you run when these guys take to the field and start exploiting the flanks. It's very clear what happened to West Brom when Pinola was injured and he had to be taken off. Can this system work? Yeah, if you can see, um, you know, Keeley had a blinder. He had a really good game, won the play of the match, and. Uh, Will the system work with you? I'm pretty sure it will. I hope that um, you've enjoyed this edition of Bustanet. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the show and you found this helpful, please subscribe to this channel. You can also find me at addicted2fm.com or find me on Twitter at Bustanet. Please uh, drop me a comment and let me know how you go on with your systems. Uh, and if you need more help, you know, you know where to find me. For now, thanks for watching. I'll catch you again.